Hey guys, welcome back or if you're new, hi, how are ya? So today I'm gonna be going over books that I wish I could read for the first time again. When I tell you I would do not anything, but almost anything to read these books for the first time again, I'm not lying. These books have made such an impact on my life that I wish I could read them with fresh eyes and a whole new experience and just relive that thrill, you know what I mean? There's nothing as good as reading a book for the first time that has changed your life in such a profound way. And these are all the books that I wish I had that experience again. Currently on the list, I only have five. But if you guys want to hear more of the books that would be on this list, let me know because I definitely could make another one. I just have to think about it a little bit more. But these were just the first five that came to mind when thinking about this. We're going to first start off with a book that I literally recommend to anybody that will listen to me yap about this book, which is Starfish. Starfish is truly one of my favorite books of all time. And when I say that I don't say that lightly. I first read it because Chloe, she's also another booktuber, she read it and something about when she was reading, I was like, oh, I need to read this too. So I read it and genuinely it has been such an experience. I stayed up all night reading it. I wish that I had bought this book when I first read it so I can just annotate it with my first fresh thoughts, but I actually borrowed it from a library. So I can't have that experience, but I am gonna reread it and annotate it because this is truly one of my favorite books of all time. If you look into trigger warnings or that is something that you need to do before reading it book. I would definitely do that with this book. It follows Kiko and she is in a very toxic household. Very, very, very toxic household. And basically she is trying to kind of figure out life in a way. She's an artist. So she is, you know, applying to art schools and she meets a guy. And but that's like not the point of the story. It's not her romantic relationship. But that is a part of the story is her relationship with this guy and also getting mentored by an artist and just how she deals with, you know, moving on with her life despite her very toxic family trying to hold her back and just dealing with the traumas that they have left behind and how to move forward as an individual. And there are just so many things about this book that just really resonated with me. I was crying in the club when I was binging this book so much. I felt so seen. Although Kiko is Japanese, she's like half Japanese, half American, and I'm Korean. So it's not like I had a one-to-one -one experience with her. I mean, in all the book. It's not like I had a one-to-one -one experience with her, but I definitely felt seen. I felt like I was going along in this ride with her. I also, you know, resonate with certain things that have happened as well. So just to see that in a different character just made me feel close with her. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys ever get that feeling where a character of a book just feels either like a friend or a past self. And that's just kind of what it felt like with Kiko. So I highly recommend it, especially if you have a toxic family or grew up in a toxic household, especially if you're dealing with a family member had or still has narcissism tens tendencies or is a narcissist. This book will definitely help you see that in a different lens. I would say this book is definitely not for everybody though. So if you kind of don't like those themes, I definitely would not pick this up. But I, I just know that even when I reread this, it's not going to be the same. And that's okay. I mean, I wish I could read it for the first time, but I'll settle with rereading it and putting in annotations for the first time, you know? The next book is... <laughs> I feel like a lot of the books that I have put on this list are sad books and I didn't I didn't mean to do that but that's just kind of how the cookie crumbled with this. I really I guess resonate with sad books but anyways speaking of sad books I have Crooked Kingdom. These by the way are not in any particular order so don't think that this is like second on the list or Starfish is number one on the list or anything like that but Crooked Kingdom is the sequel to the Six of Crows book. It's a part of a duology and I don't want to say much with out because I don't want to spoil it for you guys but it is the sequel to the six of crows book and it follows the same six yes six it follows the same six main group of the crows and just their shenanigans and adventure I'm not going to spoil it but if you know you know with Nina and Matthias and Inej and Kaz especially Nina and Matthias it just really broke my heart and I just think about them still to this day and it's been three years now since I have read this book I don't even know how to 
move forward from that. Because even when Lee made the other spinoff books with Nikolov, Nikolai, Nikolai, and Nina was in those books, it just really broke my heart, even with the spinoffs, with her making a cameo. So I simply don't think I'll ever move on. And I'm kind of scared to reread it because I feel like I'm going to hurt my feelings again rereading this series. But I definitely do want to do that. Like it's on my list to do, but I'm definitely taking my time because this broke me in more ways than one. Just knowing that this book had so much impact on my life, it just makes me want to reread it again. But I wish I could reread it with new eyes. So if you guys have read Six of Crows but not read Crooked Kingdom, I highly recommend it and let me know so I can live vicariously through you. The next book is Crying in H Mart, which is a memoir of Michelle's honor. And she is the lead singer of Japanese Breakfast and I gotta say, first off, this book introduced me to her music and her music is phenomenal. I love Japanese Breakfast. I am a converted fan. If she has no fans, I am dead. Simply, I am dead because her music just is so good. So if you guys haven't checked out her music, definitely check out her music. But this book is basically following Michelle and her journey through grief and taking care of her mom when she was sick and then ultimately when she passed away and just kind of dealing with that. It touches topics about identity because a big theme of it is that she's Korean American. She is half white, half American. So just dealing with that is a whole other aspect of it. And also just, you know, dealing with a sick mom and the death of a parent and you know reconnecting with a parent that she wasn't quite close with as you can see by all the tabs I wish I put more tabs to be quite honest with you but as a Korean American I'm not biracial but I'm a Korean person that lives in America and this book just really spoke to me on that level although I don't know the same struggle that she feels by being biracial and not feeling enough in that capacity I feel like being Korean American and living in America a majority of my life it kind of has a similar feeling where you just don't feel like you're Korean enough for Korean people, but you don't feel American enough because I definitely don't look like most Americans. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm not white passing at all and I will never have that experience and just growing up with that feeling of feeling very other is a very real feeling. So yeah, this book really hit home for me in so many different aspects and I just felt so seen and to feel seen by another person let alone a book where millions of other people probably feel seen is kind of an amazing feeling, honestly. I, it just feels very much like we're all in this together in some weird way. So yeah. If you have not read Crying in H Mart, highly recommend. The next book is The Hunger Games. I have read The Hunger Games in high school and my life has been changed ever since then. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but I used to read a lot as a child. And when I hit high school, I kind of stopped reading as much, at least recreationally, just because I was assigned a lot, like a lot of readings, especially as I hit like AP English. And just reading for assigned reading just kind of suck the fun out of reading for me. So I didn't read as much of the books that I probably should have or wanted to. And I think that's why I feel pretty behind on a lot of the books that are kind of like the core memory of a lot of people for YA. But The Hunger Games, The Hunger Games changed the game for me. The Hunger Games, which I totally believe, I totally am on the bandwagon that this is going to be a modern classic because it's a phenomenal book. It's not just YA. It is so much more than that. Like it is a commentary on society and it's still so relevant to this day. But The Hunger Games, I was obsessed. I was eating that up. Don't ask me how I acquired the Hunger Games, <laughs> but I did. And I literally binged the entire series in I think like a matter of a week and a half at most. I was reading it whenever I could. Like literally I would go to school and during the school day, I would read it. And then if I wasn't doing that, then I actually, now that I think about it, I think I binged this in like three days, <laughs> but literally I would go to school, read it. After school, read it. After my job, read it. Before my job, read it. <laughs> literally whenever I could read this book, I would read it and I was obsessed. I was eating that up because it was just so good. To 
Suzanne Collins has a way with words and she just sprinkles a little something in there that just makes it so addicting. And I just don't know how else to explain it. And then the movies came out, the movies came out and it was just like a whole cultural phenomenon. I was a really big Harry Potter fan when I was younger too. So having that cultural phenomenon was one thing. And then the Hunger Games came out and it was like another cultural phenomenon. And just having that experience, especially over Tumblr, I was definitely a Tumblr girly, just having that connected experience with a community of people that also loved this fandom was just level and then the other media that came out of it like the maze runner divergent and all of the other stuff that just kind of spawned from it was just a whole new experience it felt like as a fandom we were getting fed that is just something that i wish i could experience for the first time like not just even reading the book but just experiencing what it was like to be a part of that like we kind of get it now with the weekly episode drops of certain shows like game of thrones house of the dragon the office when it was coming out and all the marvel shows that have been coming out as well kind of get it now a little bit but it wasn't on the same level as it was back when hunger games the movie and the books came out so yeah if i could just experience that again i would be a-okay last but certainly not least is the poppy war series by rf kwong i love the series so much genuinely so 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 much i read this back in like 2021 when i was getting back into reading and I could not binge it. I refuse to binge this series because it is not a series to binge in my opinion. It's very heavy, very dark. And honestly, if you're gonna read this series, look into the trigger warnings because there is a lot of fucked up stuff in this series but it is so well written that it's so crazy that this is her debut series rf kwong there is a reason why she is my instant buy author like one of them because she could literally write a grocery list and i would i would read it she could write notes to herself i would read it because she is so 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 talented and i feel like this series kind of gets a little bit of hate like either people love it or hate it because you know it talks about like real life things that have happened and people think it's a little insensitive that she has written about it but I gotta say as someone who has read the series sure a lot of it is based on real life things that have happened but I feel like Rebecca has researched this very well and sure incorporating real life things into a historical fantasy series can give off the wrong message but I don't know a single person that has read the Poppy War series and has come out of it thinking like oh this is like a goofy little fantasy like it is so filled to the brim with a lot of serious topics and you're not coming out of it thinking oh yeah like this is a silly goofy thing and that's that and you forget about it like at least the people that I've been hearing talk about it at least when I think about my experience reading it it's so serious that you think about it for weeks months years maybe and you just think about like the impacts that the characters have gone through and if you know that this is based on real life events at least in my experience I think about the real life impact of how it's been happening in the real world you know so maybe that's just me maybe that's just what type of commentary that I've been seeing for the people that have read it and I've like firsthand witnessed but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing especially when Rebecca clearly respects the history sure she writes about it and uncovers what the deplorable things that have happened but you can tell that she has spent a lot of time and care researching this in order to make this a very well-rounded and very cohesive story you know and just to be able to shed light on that is a talent in itself without it coming off either too fictionalized or too disrespectful. Rebecca can do no wrong for me. I know she's hit or miss for some people, but she is an absolute hit for me. I will read anything that she puts out there. I do not care. If you're watching this, Rebecca, I don't think you are. If you have any upcoming releases, please send me the arcs because I will read it. Just kidding. Or am I? Anyways, that is the end of the list. Like I said, if you guys want more books on this list, let me know and I'll make another video. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books. What are some of the the books that are on your list that you could read for the first time again and that is it i will see you guys next time bye